Good evening, and thank you for joining us tonight for this webinar on resume writing with a punch. So those who know me know that resume writing is one of my very favorite topics. I, I actually love to write resumes and, and um, edit them. Uh, you know, it's, it's, I feel like it's a lot of fun. Of course, it's not as fun if you're the one who's in the job search and, and you know, you have that extra stress and all of that. But um, I actually, I love talking about resumes and tips and, and ways to make your resume more powerful and, and ways to get through those, you know, ATS systems, right? The applicant tracking systems that uh, sometimes uh, weed out a lot of people. And we're going to talk a little bit about that as well. But I do have a webinar that's entirely devoted to resume writing to pass the, the ATS. So there's another one on that topic. You might want to check that out if you're interested in more information on that uh, aspect. So uh, we are going to jump right in today, and, and I'm going to be talking a little bit, kind of giving you an overview of the kinds of resumes a little bit, just very quickly, before we get to kind of some of the more tips and techniques to really, you know, get through and, and make yours, you know, really powerful so that it does get that attention of the people who are who are screening right and deciding who's going to be able to come in for that interview or interview virtually in our covid reality these days so that's what we're going to be talking about so buckle up and let's let's get going here i like this slide here because it really just talks about the different kinds of uh resumes that uh that are out there right the, there's three main types there's the chronological the functional, and then what we call the hybrid. And I asked a question before we got started uh, about what people thought were the most uh, was the most popular or the most common kind. And it looks like most people said the reverse chronological, right? Um, and that's absolutely right. That's the that's the most common. Doesn't mean that it's always the right version. But the reverse chronological means that your most recent job and experience is first, and then you go backwards, right? The reason it's done that way is because most employers are most interested in your more recent uh, experience, right? Uh, if, you, if you have experience that's 20 years ago, it's just not, you know, it might be relevant. You could put it on there as other experience, but they're really looking at oftentimes your more recent experience. So you're absolutely right. Those who said reverse chronological um, being the most uh, the most common. Now, uh, some, let's see who put functional here. Someone put, Erica put functional, and I assume that's maybe the kind that you're using or maybe your favorite kind. Uh, either way, uh, the functional resume is a little bit different, right? It's not emphasizing your work experience as much as it is your skill set. So a functional resume, and I'm going to show you a picture in a moment here as well to help you with this, but the functional resume more, it emphasizes, um, you know, the, the category, like your, your skills, what your skills are. So it might be project management or uh, writing and editing or things like that, depending on what you're going for, right? When you write a functional resume, you actually don't even put, you put your bullets from your more standard resume underneath the skill set right of of what your um what uh, of what the skills are and you have to prove it right that kind of information but you don't you don't mention where it was what company it was where it was located you just copy and paste the actual bullet there what you do do afterwards at the end is you have an employment history and that's really important to call it, I think, more like that, because it's just this is just a listing of your organizations, the location, your job title and your dates. That's it. There's no details under that, because theoretically, you have put the important details under the, the, the skill set, um, the skill, each of the skill headers. So they end up being different headers oftentimes. Right. And those are up front. So those are on, you know, page one or the top where, let's face it. Most employers are really not even getting to the bottom of a resume necessarily, right? So you want to make sure that, that those skills stand out up front. You know, the functional resumes are traditionally used for people if, um, if they maybe are changing drastically where their most recent experience would 
typecast them maybe as a certain profession and why is she looking to at this she's a teacher or she's whatever so sometimes people will use a functional resume for that it also can be good for situations where maybe you've been out of the workforce for some time um, i wouldn't say covid would necessarily qualify for that because most people understand covid being a reason that many many people you're not alone if you are one who is unemployed during covid but um, maybe you were a stay-at-home mom or stay-at-home parent, or maybe you, you know, had a, I took some gap time and traveled around and, you know, so, so to kind of avoid having those um, gaps be as a parent, oftentimes people will use the functional resume. Now, I am still, I think there's a time and a place for a functional resume and it can be a good thing, but just know that many people have a bias against it because A, they don't understand it. It doesn't look like a traditional resume, right? What is this? Where's the places she worked, you know, or he worked? So it's it's different than many people know. And then some people will automatically assume, uh, oh, what are you trying to hide? You're using this functional. Functional's used when you're trying to hide something, is what their you know thought is, right? So just know that. And you know, there could be a, a time where it is appropriate though to use it. And then the third type here um, is really listed as the hybrid. And the hybrid, I like the hybrid because it's kind of a, it's a combination or a hybrid, if you will, of those first two styles, right? Your reverse chronological and, you know, the, the functional. With a hybrid, what you end up doing, and again, you'll see a picture of this momentarily. Um, you, uh, I believe we, we have one in here. I'll, I'll talk to you about it more. Uh, the, you, you are, you might be choosing um, a skill set, like maybe it's, you know, project management and you have jobs that fall under there, right? Or, or, or you have, or you have a, your job is listed and then you have it broken down underneath that job with, for example, if you had a job and you were, you know, you're a project manager somewhere, right? You might have as one of the, one of the um, headers underneath that job could be project management or communications, PR, whatever, right? Editing, writing, whatever the different skills that you're trying to prove are, right? Um, and those you're going to obviously get from the job description. And we'll talk about the job description a little bit later as well. And that really is your key. It's like your inside scoop on what do they see as the ideal candidate? And how do I need to, to package myself to fall into that you know, category of that ideal candidate so that I can get that resume and, um, and go from there. And the trick is not to lie, but it's how do you package the skill set that you do have? Okay, so let's go on here. And, and I want to actually allow a lot of time tonight for questions from people, um, questions that you have, just general resume questions. So you can certainly begin to drop those into the chat box anytime um, is absolutely fine. But here I just have a slide that you know, shows, and this is from another workshop that I had done, right? The chronological kind of being the standard, right? Functional changing, um, you know, and then the hybrid that the, the mix there. But I want to show you what a traditional chronological resume might look like. And this is a sample. This is actually not my sample. I, I used one from um, online. And as always, there's going to be, you're going to look at this and there's probably parts you like about it and parts you don't. There are certainly a few things on here that I would change and I'll, I'll go over that um, as well. But I wanted to show you kind of the overall what it looks like, right? So you have, you know, at the top, you have your contact information in whatever format you want to do that, right? Your name could be all caps. Um, it should be the biggest thing on the, the page, your name. So, and it is in this case, right? Including your, you know, phone number and your email. You don't have to include your physical address. You can, in this case, for this person, if they're applying for a job that's in Singapore, I would absolutely have them include that because it gets them that insider right connection they're already in the region that they want to you know hire within so that can be a really great asset but let's say they're looking to hire you for montana or somewhere somewhere in the states right very far from singapore right uh not necessarily you wouldn't necessarily want to say where you're located although let's 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 be honest we know that 
with COVID, everything's virtual now anyway. And I think that uh, employers have really had their eyes opened on the fact that people can be effective regardless of whether they're sitting in your, you know, physical office or their, you know, teleworking. So I think there might be more opportunities for people uh, or to make a case for that kind of a thing, but I still wouldn't point it out in their face if it's really far from where, um, where, you know, the, the job is. And the other thing I would say about that is uh, if you do, if you're in the process of relocating to that place uh, where it's close to the job anyway, and you're going to be there, you could certainly put that city and state, um, you know, and if you wanted to put an actual physical address, if you have a friend or family member with whom you'd be staying in the beginning until you get on your own feet, um, you could put that or just the city and state usually um, these days uh, suffices. So uh, so that's that's really up top. Then you'll notice here now I'm, you know, it, it, it the, the way that that it has, it has like, you know, your statement up front, your, your basically key qualifications or your summary statement, right, your profile. And this one's quite long and it's not bulleted, which generally your uh your long paragraph style, just don't get read as much. So I would definitely encourage this person to use bullets so that at least it's it's more, uh, you know, it, it can be read in chunks a lot easier. Uh, and then you have, you see, so the traditional chronological has the professional experience, definitely use professional instead of just experience. Why? Because it just sounds more professional, in my opinion. Uh, some people will use like work experience or, or work history. I do not like work history except for the functional when you're listing it at the very end, that style, because you're, you want to really emphasize your professional experience up front. And then here you'll see, you know, the, the organization, you know, right there, their the organization, the location, and this person puts the organization, the uh, location, Singapore, and the dates all on one line. And then you have on the next line, just the title. Personally, for me, I think it, I think it looks better if you have either if you, you put together the the um, the organization and the location on one line, and then the job title and the dates on the other line. How you order it, whether it's your job title first or your organization first, depends on what's most relevant, what's going to make you look more experienced and more, you know, in this area that they, they're looking for the experience in. Whatever the answer is, you can put that on the first line, but you need to be consistent and do that always, not just for that one and then flip it the opposite for the other one. You want to make sure that you're consistent in how you do it. So whatever you choose, make it be consistent the rest of the resume. Okay. Uh, so I just think it's more balanced when you do it that way, uh, personally, but, uh, and then bullets, I like that there's the bullets on this one and using, you know, some of the, you know, action verbs, right, as much as possible, right, and uh, coming up with, yes, some, some synonyms, you don't always want to say managed, 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 right, because that gets old, what are some other words for managed, folks, D dump it into the chat box, if you can think of another word for managed, what have you substituted for managed before? I'll look at my chat box here, see what's coming in. Let's see. While people are typing that in, Nadira, you had a um, question about what types work best for a federal government. Typically the federal government is your reverse chronological and there's a lot of unique aspects of a federal um, resume. So I would point you to the other, I've done uh, resume, uh, excuse me, webinars on federal resume writing and I'm happy to talk to you a little bit about it as well. You know, you may be using the USA jobs you know, the portal uh, at, you know, where you can do the resume builder and that's very ugly, the format and such, but it's the people there like it because they know how to read it really well and they can scan it very easily. Great. Carol, good, good job. Direct, um, head, so manage some synonyms, led, initiatives, right, coordinated, oversaw, supervised. There's so many words for it, but yes, you want to use the word that they use in their description more than the other ones, but you don't want to have three bullets in a row or right. You know, that's just manage, 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 manage. So, so definitely swap it up a little bit as well. Thank you, everyone. That's great. Uh, and then you go on to now, now in this case here, in this example, they have the accomplishments as kind of a subheader underneath each of the jobs where you can really focus on, you know, what were your accomplishments in this job. So things like awarded significant pay increases within an 18 month period 
for superior service or, or um, yeah, recognized with da, 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 whatever it is due to and, and put why, right? Those are things federal loves the accomplishments, right? But most, I, I would say, like the accomplishments as well. Some people will not always have like the accomplishments header that takes an extra space, right? But you can weave those accomplishments in to your resume as an alternative as well. But yes, it definitely pulls it. If you want to just see accomplishments and they're all right there, you have the space for it. That's great. Okay. So definitely put any questions that you have um, as we go through in the chat box, and I'm happy to answer those. Uh, you can see on the bottom of this one, and then there's the next entry, right? And, uh, you know, the organization's name, location, and the dates. And note how they list the dates, just the years. I'm not a fan of that, and nor are, for federal, you have to put month, um, because they're, they're rating you on, like, how many years or months of experience do you have in XYZ? And if you have, you know, 1997 to 1998, for example, could be as much as two years, January 97 to December 98, right? Or it could be as little as two months or even less right? December 97 to January 98. So you really want to give them a little more of that idea. And I know people do this to try to kind of hide the, um, the, if there's job gaps and such, but I just, especially when it's from one year to another, if it's, if your experiences are such that you've been somewhere for five years, you know, four years, 10 years, long periods of time, doing just the years, even that, if they do the quote unquote worst case scenario, right? December of the first year listed and January of the next one, you still have adequate experience. So um, you're probably okay in that regard. So being concise is really key with the uh, resume in, in general, right? And, and the one page or two page generally is like what what most want to see. Now, sometimes with a senior level position where they're asking for 20 years of, you know, blah, 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 you might need more than just the two pages to, um, to, to really describe that, right? And so sometimes that's, that's an exception. But in general, one to two pages, because as I said, they're really only interested usually in your, in your more recent exam, um, uh, job experience and stuff, right? So, and then you can see here on the bottom, there's the education you know, header, which, you know, I know a lot of people who just are just graduating now, maybe, and they're like, well, they told me at my college, I should put that right up front. It's the biggest thing that I bring right now. I have my master's and as much money as you put into that and all of that. And yes, it's great. And it's important. It, it, um, it's going to scream new grad, no experience. So if you're applying for a fellowship and it's for recent grads, fine, you can put your, your experience right up front. But if you're applying for a job and you're trying to get in, you don't necessarily want them to say, oh, new experience no grad, no experience. Even if you have a lot of experience, they just see the new grad, right? And um, so, so I usually say to incorporate that into your education, like your master's. So it might be, you know, bilingual professional with master's in public health and six years of specialized experience in, da, da, da. that could be your profile or that first sentence that you have bullet, in my opinion, under, you know, what you're, what you're going for, right? Like at the top before you get into your professional experience. So if that helps, okay. And then um, other recommendations I just had put down here, you know, the first, yeah, the, um, you might, you know, you, they have like their accountant or, you know, like what their, their job title is, program manager, whatever, kind of what they're, what they're seeing themselves as. It doesn't necessarily have to be your most recent job uh, title, but um, another way to do that for a first category is to have, you know, key qualifications, right? Summary of qualifications is another choice, right? But key qualifications by nature indicates these are my key qualifications. I have lots of them, but these are my key ones as related to that position, right? So you could have, I mean, on your master resume that you're not giving to anybody, you could clearly have 20 key qualifications. You're not going to list 20 key qualifications when you submit it. You're going to list, I generally say, you know, two to four, maximum five, okay? Because you just don't have, you want to get into the experience and such as well, okay? So, I hope you understand that's kind of the traditional one. And um, we'll go on a little bit here and see the sample functional very, very briefly. I just wanted to show you this picture. Uh, it emphasizes skills over the work uh, history itself, right? So when I was talking about, you know, you might have your qualifications or as I prefer key qualifications up front with those three, you know, items, but then skills and experience, you could have these 
different headers. So right here, you can see it's project and um, program assistance, right? The next one's what? Research and the third one, curriculum development and facilitation. Those are like the categories that you're, those are the skills to really make it pop and to make yourself competitive for the positions. You want to spotlight what they're looking for in the job description, right? Now, sometimes they'll have 20 different qualifications. You're not gonna be able to go through and do 20, right? You can sometimes weave different ones into the main categories, but typically the more important ones tend to be at the top, not always, but you know, you, you, you can kind of, some of them, sometimes they just put like everything in the, you know, under the sun that, that they want. Right. But you want to try to uh, try to address some of those in some of the ones that you might not have categories for, you know, you might be addressing also in, you know, your cover letter, things like that. So you can see here how there's different bullets that are under each one. So coordinated compilation of all English, da, 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 right? That's from maybe the person's Peace Corps experience, but they don't have to put Peace Corps or where it was from. They just put it under there. Other kinds of accomplishments, numbers, numbers pop, right? So what, how many people did you train? What, you know, those kinds of things. Um, what was the outcome? Think about those when you're when you're writing these, right? And that can help you make a good case in this. And then you're going to have your, you know, just your um, uh, at the end your work history, where you can put uh, just where you were and and when, where it doesn't get as much attention. Um, it's it's more the attention is more on what the skills are. That's the focus. So it can be good for career changers, uh, maybe where you know your experience is all in one area, but you're really trying to leverage your transferable skills and get into a totally different area. And that's what many are, are doing these days. So uh, some employers are unfamiliar with you know the functional, like I said, so they may kind of or they may be biased against it. Um, and that's why in 2021, I mean the most popular. I.e. and most um, desired by many employers is your chronological, reverse chronological. So, um, but there are some exceptions to that, certainly. So this is just the page two to show you what the, the functional resume looks like on the second page, right? Where you have your, you know, whatever your title was, your where, what organization, and then the dates and, you know, and the location. Okay. And then your education after that, and then the specialized skills and trainings. I like the specialized skills category uh, because it allows you to outline and, and really emphasize things like computers, you know, your different, you know, Microsoft Office, Slack, you know, what, what different kinds of Trello, other kinds of, you know, industry, you know, relevant technology and software and all of that. So um, you can certainly put that down. You can also include your languages, um, certifications that are relevant can be included, right? I mean, if you're looking, if you're going to be a reservist and you're doing like FEMA emergency, you know, management and out in the field, yeah, maybe your, you know, CPR, you know, first aid, emergency medical, technical, you know, whatever, that would be relevant, right? So that's just uh, to show you that. Now I want to show you this one, which is a more, maybe a more typical uh, 2021. It is a reverse chronological, but you'll notice a lot different than the than the standard one that I showed you. So I'd love you to just, um, what do you notice? What do you notice that's different than the, than the uh, reverse chronological sample that you saw earlier? Just uh, drop your things into the uh, chat box, or you can unmute yourself and, uh, and share that way. I mean, resumes definitely change over the years and, you know, styles and what, how people do them, right? Anyone want to share anything? And much more pleasing to the eye. Yeah, these can be very, right? Um, the, the way that it's done here. And, and that's because of a little bit of, right? You have a little bit of like the color, you know, right? The blue and the black, right? Just subtle. Um, anyone else? Clean look. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, what else? What else do you notice that wasn't in the, the kind of traditional one? What about the skills? Notice how at the top they have that little area where it's, you know, they're, they're, they're like little icon buttons, right? They're, they're, you know, research and strategy, sales, marketing. That's becoming um, a very, I don't want to say hip, but like a, a popular 
way to um, categorize, like a popular thing to include in, in your, um, on your resume, right? And it may be like this, where you just have the skills and it's just those things and those should match what they're looking for, obviously, as well. Um, but sometimes they'll be like on the right side coming down. I forget if I have, I may have a, a sample of that later where it might have, you know, skills or, um, you know, people on LinkedIn, right? What do people see you as having? It's, it's kind of an assessment of you and of your skills. Some people will put that and they'll have like a bar grid that shows three, four, four, you know, whatever. Um, that's, you know, that's another option. And I think you're absolutely right. It's because it's so much more, uh, it, it's easier to digest when it's right, when it's very clean, when it's very, when there's lots of, you know, space and such. Uh, notice how the contact information on the top is um, in, you know, it has the line above and below it and it has the little icons, right? Location, New York, the little, right? The little like location map thing, you know, LinkedIn profile, great, putting your LinkedIn and it's, it's um, shortened. It's not the long one that has numbers and everything that people don't, you know, it's hard to remember. So it's easy to remember, right? So it's very crisp and clean. And uh, yeah, so it's, there, there's lots there. And, and Sarah, you put down emotional intelligence. And I'm wondering if you're saying, is it, is it one that maybe speaks more to that or it shows emotional intelligence or, um, but, uh, and yeah, social media, someone had said, right. You have your, your social media in it. Um, absolutely. Yep. So I, I, I like this one. I think it does look nice, right? Uh, there's as, as general, there's things that, that I like more than other things. Um, I like, so I, so I like how clean it is. I like the top where you have the person's name and then underneath it, business development manager or however they're framing themselves, right. As the professional. So they see that right up front and then there's the little profile statement, right? So if you can't read this, hopefully you can, but professional business developer with more than four years of experience in the business development process, uh, processes, involved in product testing, management, and development of new business opportunities. So it's just a very short, here's who I am in a nutshell, as related to the position you're going for. You're gonna have, the truth of the matter is, you're gonna have a lot of different resumes, right? And always save the copy of your, whatever your resume you're using. And then that way, when you go to apply for another job, little trick, you always go to the most recent one that you've done, or not most recent, the most relevant one to the job that you're now applying for and start with that as a base and then tweak it for the specific job description as I was talking about, right? Finding those keywords, plugging those in, all of that, right? And it'll make your job much easier than starting from scratch each and every time from your master. So I hope that that helps as well. Great. Uh, so yes, I, I definitely like this one down below. You have some of the organizations that like the person's a member of, right. Which, you know, can be good as well. Um, especially when they're, you know, related and then languages on the bottom. This is one way somebody, you know, here has their, you know, English native or bilingual proficiency, Spanish, full professional proficiency, uh, you know, French limited working proficiency. I mean, you know, it's, 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 uh, you know, sometimes I'll put oral and written, you know, if it's, if it's different for, um, or they're including both so that they know, but yes. So that's an example, right? Of, of a very clean type of uh, 2021-esque uh, type. And you can find, if you go online, I'm gonna send you also some, some samples, some links that will have uh, like, you know, 15 free templates and you can kind of look at, there's ones for business, professional, you know, creative, because definitely some of the creative types, you know, especially some of the like marketing media, you know, web design are gonna be maybe extra creative in some ways, right? They wanna see that because it, it definitely bleeds into to your, you know, your work and, and how you would be in that front. So you want to be a little more creative, perhaps. The one thing you'll notice on the samples that I'm showing is there's no picture. Some of the samples that you'll see, they'll show pictures. What I want to say about that is in general, here in the United States, you do not use a picture on your resume. It's kind of, it's considered a kind of taboo. You don't want to do it, right? Uh, unless it's like a requirement or, you know, for, for example, maybe you're going for, um, you're an actor and you're going for a screen reading or a model, then it might be more, you know, okay to do that. But in general here in the States, we don't. Now that's very different than in other countries, you know, Europe and many countries, I believe it's, you know, par for the course still that they, um, they do have, you do put a, 
uh, a, a photo in. Now, what you do put here in the States is your LinkedIn, which of course, once you go to your LinkedIn, you're typically going to have a picture there anyway. So make sure it's professional. Uh, not just you cut out from, you know, a group of friends where you're raising a glass of, you know, like champagne or something. You want to make sure that it's a professional one. It doesn't have to be a professionally taken one, but one that looks professional. Um, and you do have that. So, um, but not on the resume itself. Okay. Any other questions so far as we move uh, through this? I'm happy to take a couple questions right now. Uh, Jody, there uh, were two questions in the chat. I just great. want to make sure they don't get lost. Can you go ahead and ask those, please, Danielle? Uh, yeah, the first one was from Carol. It said, any specific suggestions for someone who has had 20 plus years experience, but the experience has been in a lot of different types of jobs, some in the US, some overseas, yep. and how to best leverage the PC experience in a resume? Yep. Um, the the So for that one, the last part of it, you said how to whatever my PC, what was the very last line? Sorry, um, and how to best leverage the PC experience in a resume. Gotcha. Yeah. So if you've had 20 years of experience, you're an experienced professional, right? You're a seasoned professional. And just because you have it in different industries, different and some abroad, some here, what you really are going to want to leverage is your transferable skills. Because for example, your Peace Corps service, right? It's great. You know, we join, we go, we want to help people and really help empower them to be able to help themselves, right? Um, and all of those things. So there's a lot of transferable skills that come out of that, right? And I bet you, I can say in any industry that you've been in or any area, you're going to have transferable skills. So for you, you're going to just need to make, be able to make that case and in your profile statement, or, you know, that header statement or in the first key qualification, if you choose to go that route, um, you, you know, could, depending on the kind of jobs that you're looking for, right? If you're looking for a job that's more of an entry-ish level with the hopes of being able to then move up when you're changing, you know, uh, industries, you might not want to emphasize, but, but you might say, you know, seasoned professional with 20 plus years experience, including, and then some of your transferable skill types of things, right, um, to, to make it to make it as, as relevant as possible. Yeah, that's that's definitely what you're gonna wanna do when you have the different ones. Because you can, you know, I, I, I know I've talked a lot with people on, you know, when they've done their uh, resume and like, like me in grad school, they worked in a, in a restaurant, right? I worked in a fancy Italian restaurant, right? When I was in grad school. And is there something, I mean, really like, there's not a lot of, when you look at it on the surface, you know, taking orders and, you know, serving the food and whatever, that's not at all related to what I'm looking, what I was looking to do, right? But you can, how you describe that, you don't have to put the routine tasks like, you know, took orders, delivered food, folded one crate of fancy napkins every night, right? You don't have to put it like that. What, how I described mine was with uh, two bullets, um, cause I'm a big, I kind of like two bullets versus one, but I think the first one was something like, and this has been a long time now, but, uh, I think it was something like provided quality customer service to diverse patrons in upscale Italian restaurant. So what are the skills that I got in there? Customer service was one of them, right? Diverse patrons. So working with right diverse populations. So that's that cross-cultural skill you know, skills, that kind of thing. So, so that was the first um, sentence. And then I think the second, uh, I'm sorry, not sentence, fragment sentence, right? Bullet. And I think the second bullet that I used was uh, something like uh, selected to train all incoming wait staff on proper procedures and protocol or something like that, right? Because it got in there training, I trained others, and also that I was selected, in other words, trusted or entrusted to, you know, uh, train all incoming. I mean, there's different ways you could say that, right? But that's all I needed to say. That got what I was doing showed I was working my way through grad school, which shows, you know, diligence as well, because it's not easy to, you know, like grad school is pretty intense. It can be. So, um, so things like that. That's, that's just an example of what I would say there. I hope that answers your question. Was there another question you said? Uh, oh, yeah, there was one more. Um, it was, I'm interested in how to address six years in a PhD program where I then decided not to finish. Post comprehensive exams was working and was working with the US FS and research when deciding to stop. Yep, yep. Um, 
Yeah, you know, you so so the person was studying for their for their PhD, they did six years of whatever research and all of that, but then decided not to actually do maybe the dissertation and continue from there. Is that fair? Fair assessment, I think maybe um, who uh, whoever this was, you're welcome to uh, put yourself off mute if you'd like, or if you're able to, and we can chat. Otherwise, feel free to get in touch with me, and I'll, I'll talk with you more about it. But my general, my general advice would be that's okay. People change their minds, right? And so, whatever you were doing, you were probably working maybe as a researcher or as a I don't know when you were in your doctoral program, you probably were doing something. So you're you know you put that down. I think people totally understand with with. Um, doctorate degrees, right? I mean, people go into that and they started and for a variety of reasons, they might decide, you know, I don't want to teach or I don't want to do the research thing. I'd rather, and they pivot into something else. And that's okay too. It doesn't mean that all that experience is, is wasted, right? I mean, you, I'm sure developed great skills from that and you can highlight those in your, you know, resume and in your interview, all of those things. And, you know, you, you can just be very, you know, I mean, if they do ask you about it, you know, you know, why did you decide not to finish? You say, you know, I, you know, while it was, you know, it was a very, you know, it, it was a, an excellent experience to have. And I enjoyed X, Y, Z, if that's true, whatever you make that, you know, that case I had decided before finishing that, you know, it really, my, my calling was not in, I don't know what the situation is, so it's hard for me to make that up, but, you know, in, uh, as a professor, and I really wanted to take my strong XYZ skills that my doctoral preparation really instilled in me and transfer them to the XYZ industry, that kind of thing. So not, it's not a problem. I, I don't think there's going to be a like, oh, why didn't she finish that kind of thing? Okay. Uh, let's see here. Other questions. Um, Rachel has, how do I show when I moved to a position in the same to a new position in the same company, couple different ways, a whole new header or just a line. Yeah. So there's different ways to do that. Right. And we, I think we saw an example of where there were two, two uh, positions, different ones at the same company where they had the separate altogether. You can do that. The only concern with doing the um, separate positions is if the, if it makes it look like you haven't been there very long, uh, you know, make sure that you put as your first bullet, you know, um, or, you know, uh, promoted to, or at the last bullet of your old entry, right? Promoted to da 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 da, based on you know proven performance, dedication, whatever it was, right? And then under, you know, like so, so that it's very clear that it's promoted into managerial position based on you know da 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 da, da and have it there. The other way to do it is to have your like your organization, your organization and their location and the the comprehensive dates on the first line. And it's an exception putting the three in this case, I think it's okay. And then on the next line, you have your most recent with in parentheses, you know, 2000, you know, 19, you know, December, 2019 to present. And then your one, you're, you have the bullets for that one. And then you have the the other position that you were promoted from or you moved into from, right? And you have that one with the dates there, you know, 2017, you know, March, 2017 to December, you know, 2019, whatever it is. So then it shows them a clear, they get a picture of, oh, this is all within the same organization. If you're trying to, to build up more of a like uh, tenure. Okay. Let's see, Nadira has a question. Can federal resumes be longer than one or two pages? Absolutely, Nadira. They can, they can, they can. And they usually are because uh, if you have 10 years experience, yeah, it, it's hard to say. It depends on what you are putting into it, what you're including, how many jobs you've had. But here's the deal. If you're doing the resume builder that's on USA Jobs, it's this format that you just spit the content into and, and your, you know, your, your bullets, whatever, well, it doesn't really allow bullets, but you can copy bullets in. So that's your trick. Do it in a Microsoft word, and then you can copy it in and it'll recognize the bullet so that it's easier to read. But uh, when you, when you do that, it'll stretch it out. Like, I mean, it could very easily be five pages, you know, whatever, uh, or long. I've seen some that are really long and that's, I just, I'm, I'm not a fan of the super long either. And actually many of your feds nowadays are putting limits on it where they'll say it can be no more than a five page resume. 
So then it's up to you to make it underneath that and look at it and do the preview and make sure, you know, you, you might not put every experience into it. Okay. So that's how you do that. Uh, let's see here. Um, but how long they'd be on average, it, like I said, it totally depends on, on if you're doing your own, you know, I mean, a federal's, you know, probably going to be more if you have, because, because for a federal resume, you have to put additional information in, including, you know, um, the, uh, your supervisor's name, their, um, you know, what their contact information and whether it's okay to contact them, right. Your salary for it. Well, sometimes not always nowadays, they're going back on that. Thankfully on fed, um, not always asking for um, salary to be required, but it used to be more. And so there's like five different things that you have to put. So it ends up making it, you know, longer in that regard as well. Um, Nadir, let's see. Um, <laughs> Yes, Rachel, nice comment to her. Federal resumes are a beast. You're right. Absolutely. Um, hopefully, I think I answered that this one was a three years in a PhD program and decided to leave. That sounds similar to the one that we already talked about with the six years. So absolutely, you emphasize your, your teaching skills that you developed, your maybe it's your research skills, your ability to like curriculum design, evaluation, all those kinds of things too can be great. So wonderful. Um, let's see here. Anything else? Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, Jody, that was that was you with the with that my my namesake here. <laughs> it's even spelled the same way. All right, I love it. Uh, the OPM webinar will yeah tell you how to target it. That's good. There's there's OPM does routine webinars, regular webinars on writing federal uh, applications. There are also some resources on, and I'm not pointing you to pay for necessarily, right? Like a, you know, someone to write your, your federal resume. But what I'm saying is on um, federal resume, wait, it's federal resume place, I think. Um, it's Catherine Troutman is the owner of it. Uh, Danielle, if you can maybe look that up really quickly. It's, I think it's federal resume place. And there's, they have lots of templates and they have a whole system of like how they recommend that you write it, right? Um, how you write your descriptions and such for different things. So um, they have some free resources. So really focus on the free ones that are out there. There's definitely some really good stuff and there's a lot out there. Okay. And then uh, let's see here we have, um, yeah. So, so this, this here, how to write a resume, right? I just want to show you, this is another example and see how I'm saying, how I was saying on the right side, you can see the, um, you can see where it says skills and then it has those little bullets, right? Like this, in this, example for Robert Johnson, digital marketing specialist, right? You have his work experience, which again, I would call that professional experience personally on the left and then education at the bottom and then skills. I would call that, uh, specialized skills, but, uh, and then marketing skills right here. Like he's doing the ones that are related to the job that he's maybe going for languages. You can see the little bars where it's okay. Four, four bar, three bar, three bar, you know, that's, um, you know, and, and sort of certificate. So it's just really easy to glance at it, right? You just see like what he is and, and what his, you know, what his, what his background is. It's very easy to see that um, at a glance. And then there's just a couple of the, of the tips that are on here. And this is from Nova Resume, which Nova Resume has several templates actually there that you can um, take a look at if you want to as well, right? Um, and uh, yeah, and I don't necessarily, I, I'm not a big fan, honestly, of templates. I'm a big fan of looking at templates and how they look and then constructing more of kind of your own oftentimes. And the only reason I say that is sometimes the, the templates are hard to be read by the ATS, the, uh, the auto um, you know, tracking system. Uh, which can be problematic, right? And you getting through with them. But, you know, this, I, I think more and more can read the PDFs now, but but there are some that maybe have problems with it. So I do hear sometimes people talk about how you should maybe attach both a, you know, a PDF. The, the great thing about a PDF is it's going to look exactly like it did when you filled it out and had it all ready. Have any of you ever submitted a resume and, and it's been a doc, you know, dot doc, right? And it's, it's you know, a Word document. And then you go and you open it and you see that the last line of your cover letter or whatever goes on to a second page or something silly like that, right? That can happen. So you really, you, um, you know, you want to be careful with it and just figure that out. But this is, this is just, I think the, now this one has interests, just kind of a little more creativity there. Whether or not you include interest, I think depends a lot on, um, I mean, if you have insight, 
through some intel, your networking intel, which we're going to be talking, I think it's next week or in, in the beginning of May about like taking your, you know, networking up a notch. You know, if you have intel that, oh, the person who's the hiring manager loves whatever it is, kayaking or whatever it is, and you love that, well, great. That might be a good um, thing to bond on, right? Um, that could be looked on favorably. So, uh, but really just, you know, putting your contact information, right. Your professional title, your, your you know, summary, your objective. And I, I'm not a big fan of the word objective. Uh, I, I don't like objective as a word because it, it became so common. Like years ago, it was like everyone ended up putting a rewarding position with opportunities for growth and advancement like a rewarding position with fill in the blank, the, the company that you're going for with opportunities for growth and advancement. Ah, and that just seems so like impersonal, right? So, and then, you, you know, you have your, like I said, your experience here and tailor it to the, you know, to the job ad and always proofread, obviously. Okay. So let's see, is there any, are there any other questions that are in there? Um, this sample, while you're looking at the sample, um, just to see how you like it and, and no, it, notice it's a tech IT sample. So it might look a little different than some of the other ones that you um, that you see. So uh, let's see. I'm just looking to see if there's other other questions here. Um, okay, Danielle asked. Um, I was wondering if you should have a volunteer section, and in general, how many experiences should you showcase on your volunteer area? I think volunteer experience can be great, but I don't think you need to call it volunteer unless you're going for a position where volunteer and that's going to really like help you in that regard, because some people sadly discredit volunteer work simply because it's not paid and they shouldn't. The federal government treats it exactly the same. You, you can, you can make your skill set and your required requirements through volunteer work versus it's just a matter of how many hours was it per week and, and, and what, how much they want. If they want one year of, you know, experience in XYZ, that's one year of full-time. If you did something volunteer and it was half time for, you know, for a, uh, two years, that would give you one year worth, right? So um, that's what you have to remember with those things. But I think it's great to, to, to spotlight volunteer. I, I often counsel people to put things like maybe your, maybe your header instead of volunteer work is um, leadership and community service. And then that could kind of have, you know, lots of things because leadership, right? We're looking for leaders in whatever kinds of jobs, community service, it's giving back. It's getting, you know what I mean? It's so I, 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 I kind of think that has a little bit better ring sometimes or more official ring. And then you can put your different volunteer services and be proud of them. I mean, great things that you've, that you've done. Yeah. Um, all right. And when is the cutoff? You know, I think that depends. I mean, I, I would say it's going to depend on how much you can fit within the confines. Like if putting all of the volunteer ones forces you on to, you know, second page or maybe a third page, you clearly want to then maybe just put select, you know, leadership and, you know, community service or, you know, select volunteer experiences. Okay. Great. Okay. All right. Let's see any differences Anne asks between Google doc resumes as opposed to Microsoft Word resumes when it comes to ATS? You know, that's a good question, Anne. I actually don't have an answer on that. I don't think, I, what I will say is I have not heard that, oh, it can't read a Google Doc. So that would lead me to believe it's probably similar. Uh, I'm more familiar with, in terms of putting my, um, you know, documents and such on Word. And then, you know, having that, you know, that word and, and the features that they have and whatever, but Google Doc is fine too. And I think they have, you know, similar features. So I, I, I truly think whatever you're more uh, comfortable with is probably fine. So absolutely. Let's see any other questions here. Um, while you put those in, I'm going to just look at this tech sample. So what do you notice in this tech sample? What's different than what we've seen so far? You're welcome to unmute or dump it in the chat box. Bill Carmen, PMP, okay, and then IT project management. Okay, someone has responded here. What do we have? Let's see here. I'll come back to, to you, Nisha, on that volunteer question in a moment. But right now, if folks have thoughts on how this IT tech uh, 
resume looks differently, looks different than the other one. A quote, yes, Carol, that's the big difference. One of the big differences, there's a quote there. So, and it's testimonials from colleagues at XYZ company, right? That can be really strong, especially for if you're going for an IT type of position maybe, and you know, you're in that and, and you, they can vouch for you know, how great of an employee you are, wonderful. That, you know, it's a big risky thing when you hire somebody new right? Like somebody from the outside, you don't know anything about them other than what they say on their resume. And, you know, let's face it, sometimes it can be different than what, you know, real skills are, that kind of thing. So hearing a quote from somebody, a testimonial is a hugely important one. So that's great. Um, Bolded numbers. Yes. Notice how the numbers like the accomplishments, right? Under project, um, IT project manager saved 12 million per year. Whoa. That's a huge number, right? That is worth bolding so that they really see that when they do that seven second kind of cursory glance and they go through it, that's going to catch because it's bolded. So you can absolutely do that with some of your like accomplishments, things like that. I actually tell people sometimes with cover letters, you can do the same thing. If you have a real meaty cover letter, that's just, it's really is too long, but it's hard, really hard to get it shortened, you know, totally. You could, you could bold some of the key concepts so at least the person can kind of scan through it and get the gist of it without reading every single word. That's, that's a thought. So good. So this is just another, you know, it, it has, yeah, the accomplishments bolded, you know, the, the figures, you know, it's very hard skill focused and, and that makes sense. It's IT, right? That's really what IT is more, right? Uh, listing of the skills included, you know, core competencies and, and notice, you know, things like that. Sometimes with IT, you'll have, that's where you'll have things like all the different languages and things that go way above my head. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, and then, you know, it, it's more hard skill focused. So the listing of the skills and all of that. So I, I know we are to the end of the hour here, pretty much. I want to, I want to go over a couple more things here and then I'm willing to stay on for a few minutes if people do have additional questions, but I do want to recognize people um, who may need to leave. So um, the job description, like I said, it, it includes what is the ideal candidate. So your job is to really pack that punch by, you know, coming back with a resume that really shows what they're looking for. And here I am, I'm your ideal candidate, <laughs> right? In, in other words. Uh, and then, you know, so you, you tailor it and you tailor everyone, like I already said, and using the terminology that they use you know, all of that, um, you know, quantify everything. Just think of that whole, uh, the STAR methodology or SCAR methodology, which I think I have a slide actually coming up here on this, um, but it's where you, you describe right here, apply the STAR method, right? So it's the situation, what was going on? You know, I was in Peace Corps working in rural, you know, community health, whatever. The task, what was the, what was the task that had to be done? You know, there was a high level of malnourishment. What was the action that, you know, you took, you know, developed and implemented, you know, um, workshops and trainings to da, 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 the X number of population that, you know, lived in this area. That's all numbers, right? And then the result, what was the outcome? And that's the most important part, right? The result or the outcome. And you don't always have to have it start with that, you know, what you did and then the accomplishment at the end. You can really be very powerful by flipping it up and saying, you know, something like accomplished or achieved an X percent decrease in blah, blah, blah through and then whatever you had done, right? You can flip it up. Uh, so that's nice too, okay? So um, that's the example they use down there. Use the action words. We already talked you know, about this and we're gonna talk a little more um, as well about work in power words. And this is just a whole, whole big thing of power words, right? Initiated, implemented, led, upgraded, you know, all, all these, you know, conceptualized, delivered, like really kind of the more powerful ones. And, and you can see in this little, this little graphic, you know, the action verbs, definitely, right? What did you, you know, accomplish, you know, what did you accomplish? You're using the words like accomplished, designed, initiated, your, your popular skills. Some people will have different opinions on passion, right? So, you know, using the word passion and, um, I think it's okay. I, I, I'm, I'm, but I tend to be, I guess, more of maybe a passionate, you know, extrovert type of, you know, character, but, um, you know, proven passion for da, 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 if you're, you know, explaining something, whatever, and then industry words and the company words. So really, you know, packing those power words in is going to help you a lot. Uh, and this is from Balanced Careers, which is one of my favorite sources. I love their graphics and such. So I always 
try to pull in some of those. Federal resumes, we talked about already that it's a whole different beast. Check out the OPM workshops, check out my webinars that are all available on uh, the on our uh, global re-entry. Uh, Danielle, if you can put in there the link, <clears throat> and we also include it in the follow-up, um, but the link to where these you know webinars are. Um, we've started to now put them into different categories. We have a playlist for the finding your next career, right? And then we have another one for professional development. And then we have another one for emotional and you know well-being. Um, so there, there's like three different play, playlists now. So, so it's not so huge with just one. And then really that brings me just to the end for um, any kind of uh, questions that we have. What questions do we have at this point? Um, if there are any, I'm happy, more than happy to answer them. Danielle, let me know if there are any that are coming in. And I'm most happy to answer anything that you might want to ask about resumes. Oh, Ron, I did not even see you on here. Thank you for being here. Ron very graciously offers himself to, uh, to review RPCV resumes and does a great job. And, and uh, I don't know, Ron, if you put your email in here or if you are currently looking for more <laughs> people, you've counseled thousands I know over the years. So um, if you want to put that in there, feel free to, but uh, either way is fine. Thanks for being here. All right, I don't see any questions in here. So I think what I'm going to do is actually um, stop the recording. And we will just, um, we'll, I'll just be here for a few minutes if people do have other questions. So thanks everyone for joining me tonight and hope to see you again soon. Take care.